My name is Neil Petwari. In this video segment, I'm going to do an example of the union bound, which we derived in the previous episodes to be represented by this equation, that the probability of symbol error is less than or equal to this formula involving an average over all symbols and a Q function and the distance between symbols. In this video segment, I'm going to do an example of something I'm calling eight box quam because it's like square quam, but it has a hole in the middle. It's an empty box, if you will. The first step is always going to be to draw the symbol boundaries and list the neighbors. Here I've done that. I've gone ahead and I've put in the decision boundaries. You can see how these are the perpendicular bisectors between pairs of symbols. And some of them aren't really shown, like the line, the perpendicular bisector between symbol 111 and 000 would be, you know, somewhere over here, and it wouldn't actually change the decision region for symbol 111 or the symbol decision region for 000. So I don't have to include it. Let's take symbol 111 as the example. The nearest neighbors would be this one, this one, this one, and this one. Okay. It wouldn't include the 010 symbol, even though they touch at one point. We really, the simple rule would be that if, the, if there's a line in the decision region included, then that indicates that two symbols are neighbors. If it just meets at a point, then that does not indicate that they are neighbors. This follows the intuition that each line represents a half plane that could be an error. And once I include the half planes for the error region for, say, this 011 half plane, the 001 half plane, the 101 half plane, and the 100 half plane, I wouldn't have any need to include any more regions to cover the regions of possible errors for when I send symbol 111. So that's why I have four neighbors for the 111 symbol. And that would be the same for any symbol on the axes. Okay, and some of these symbols are separated by distance A. Some of these symbols are separated by this distance. This would be a square root of 2A. So two of the neighbors have distance square root of 2A, Two of them have distance A. That's going to be true for every on-axis symbol. The other type of symbol are the corner symbols. They have two neighbors that are distance A from each other. So now I've finished that first step. The second step is to find the distances between the neighbors. I've actually already done that. So the third step is going to be to find the energy per bit. The formula is going to average over all of the symbols, their squared magnitude, and divide by log base 2 of m. So what I get in this case, because m is 8, I get 1 over 3 times 1 over 8, and then this sum of all the 8 distances from the origin squared. Well, some of the distances are square root of 2a, some of them are a, and in fact there's 4 of each. So I'm going to have 4a squared plus 4 2a squared. These are my squared distances. So when I add all that up and I get 24 on the bottom, I have 8 plus 4 or 12 on top, I get a squared over 2. And finally, I'm going to apply the union bound formula. Union bound formula I've copied here from above. Don't forget the less than or equal to sign here because we are doing a bound, it's not an equality. And I have m equals 8. I'm going to simplify this double sum. So for the symbols that are on the axes, those symbols have two neighbors at a distance of a. So I'll end up with a 2q of square root of a squared divided by 2 and not. Those symbols also have two symbols that are neighbors that are at a distance of square root of 2a. And so I'll end up with 2a squared divided by 2 and not. And then finally, I have the corner symbols, which each have two neighbors. They have a distance of a, so I'll end up with a q of a squared divided by 2 and not. Overall, um, I have these two very similar terms, the q uh, functions where there's a square root of a squared divided by 2 and not in them. And I'm going to group those together, and I'll group together the other terms. 
and the 8 and the 16 make 2, and the 8s cancel in the second term, and I get just the q function. And there's still a function of a squared, but as we showed, a squared is equal to 2 times eb. Okay, so we have our final union bound expression, which says that the probability of symbol error is less than or equal to 2 times this q function plus this other q function. And that is now our result for the union bound. Let's also look at the nearest neighbor approximation. Our shortest distance is the one that's the minimum out of all of them, which is a, because there are only other distances square root of 2a. How many neighbors do we have with that distance? Well, we have four corner nodes, which have two of these neighbors, and we have four on-axis nodes, which each have two of those neighbors. So total we have 16 of these neighbors with this distance. And so my nearest neighbor approximation is n min divided by m times the q function with the square root of d min squared divided by 2n naught. Here we have 16 over 8. So we have 2 times the q function. The distance is a, which we can write a squared as 2eb, and we'll get this simplified version that is the same as the one we derived for the union bound. So this term is the same in those two formulas, but the addition in the union bound is to also include these neighbors that are a little bit further away. And this symbol error is going to be approximate because this term with the square root of 2 inside of the q function, the q function decays really quickly. Remember, it, it goes to 0 very, very quickly. And putting in a value that square root of 2 times whatever the argument was is going to make that q function value much smaller. And so this is going to be a pretty good approximation, especially for the low probability of error case when we're out on the tail of this q function. So either way, you're getting the picture of how we calculate the nearest neighbor approximation, how we calculate the union bound, and how we do that using the constellation that we're given. Finally, I want to mention the probability of bit error. We've mentioned that the probability of bit error is approximately 1 over log base 2 of m times the probability of symbol error when we use gray coding. Are we using gray coding in this example? Well, let's look at the bit strings that we've assigned. We can assign bit strings that change by one bit for neighboring symbols, with the exception of the symbols between neighbors that are both on the axes. These symbols, if I make an error from one axis to another axis, those are going to have two bit errors. But those are the less likely errors. So in this case, while gray coding is not a perfect assumption, it is always an approximation, and so this approximation holds. So the probability of bit error for the nearest neighbor approximation, for example, would be one-third times this 2 q function. So we'd have 2 over 3 times the q function of the square root of eb over n naught. And in the union bound expression, we'd have the two-thirds of the first q function and one-third of the second q function as our approximate probability of bit error. Since it's an approximation, we can write the probability of bit error using the approximation for the gray coding, just noting that it's not going to be quite as accurate as it would be for PSK or square quam.